Hi, this is Joe Elsasser, president and founder of Covisum, and also a practicing financial advisor. And welcome to another FinPlan Friday. Here in 2021, we're gonna be experiencing a lot of after effects of the pandemic. 2020 was an incredibly rough year for a lot of people around the country, and we're really starting to see some, some signs of life. Hopefully you're seeing that in your area too. And yet, we're also going to be peppered with news. And one of the big news items we expect is the release of the Social Security Trustees Report. Now, every year, and for the last two years, it's been on April 22nd. This year's report has been delayed. But every year, the Social Security Trustees make projections about how long Social Security Trust Funds will last. And they also make projections about what happens when the Social Security Trust Fund is depleted, as it will inevitably be. Social Security was intended as a pay-as-you-go system, but when you had baby boomers working and fewer of the greater generation collecting benefits, you also didn't have, you, we were building up reserves in the Social Security Trust Fund. And we've begun to spend into those reserves, and it was projected pre-pandemic. So, the 2020 trustees report came out in April, but at that point they could not have anticipated the effects of the pandemic. And so the 2020 trustees report came out with a disclaimer that it did not include the impacts of the pandemic. Uh, and so at that point, the trust funds were projected to run out in 2035 with roughly 75% of benefits payable thereafter, even after trust funds had been exhausted uh, 75 cents on the dollar roughly would be able to continue to be paid in then current tax revenues. Now, several reports came out through the course of last year, probably the most alarming suggested that trust funds could run out as early as 2029 and at that point only pay 69% of projected benefits. After that report came out, several others came out including an estimate last November, a new baseline estimate by the Social Security trustees that suggested maybe 2034 would be the date of depletion and still in that 75% of benefits payable after the point of depletion. And so what we're really expecting is a trust funds report that suggests a 2034 or a 2033 depletion date uh, going forward, and then somewhere in the neighborhood of 75% of benefits payable thereafter. So some of the big concerns that people have, the first big concern is that Social Security is going broke, I need to claim as soon as possible in order to get as much money out of the system as possible. Now that's really an unfounded belief because there would be current tax revenues after that point. And frankly, the idea of Social Security benefits going to zero is not an idea you should be afraid of. Uh, it's not a, a reason to claim early. Now, it does make sense to stress test a plan and say, okay, if Social Security benefits were cut by 20, 25%, is my plan still okay? If it is, then you should follow one of the optimal claiming strategies. If it's not, you need to look at the overall financial plan and identify what places it would give. Identify where is there extra room? Does someone need to work longer? Does someone uh, need to spend a little less now in order to have a cushion? Now, ultimately, we don't anticipate a full benefit cut becoming the reality. But what will happen, uh, the closer we get to these deadlines, the more talk you will hear about the potential for Social Security going broken, about benefit cuts. And so the fear level among the consumer base out there, you know, those folks who are on the edge of claiming, is going to go up, which is, increases the potential for poor decisions. So as an advisor, you really have an opportunity right now to educate the public on what does it mean. Number one, what does it mean when they say Social Security is going broke? It doesn't mean the system won't pay a dime in benefits. Instead, what it means is that the trust funds would be depleted and current tax revenues would only support round numbers, roughly 75% of benefits. 
Second, what does it mean to your client's financial plan? Does it mean that they run out of money 10 years earlier, or does it mean that they need to cut $300 out of their lifestyle today or work one or two years longer? So when you really think about it that way, we have a great opportunity as advisors right now, and particularly as the news cycle heats up when the new trustees report is eventually released, we have a great opportunity to educate consumers and help them avoid making a knee-jerk reaction to something that sounds terrible. It sounds terrible when you hear Social Security is going broke. Now, there are a variety of tools out there. We've just updated Social Security timing software to allow you to model a benefit cut. And in most cases, you see a break-even point for clients that moves by a period of three to four years. That's roughly what a full benefit cut would represent. And so for most people in average or better health, their life expectancy would suggest that they still likely delay. At least one member of a household, probably the higher wage earner, should still generally delay even if we experienced a full benefit cut. But we also need to be prepared to talk about why it's highly unlikely that we'll experience that full benefit cut. Some combination of changes is very likely to happen. Some of the potential changes are increase in taxes on current workers. Now that has happened periodically throughout history. A change in the social security formulas. Generally those changes tend to benefit lower wage earners and penalize higher wage earners. <clears throat> now does that mean that we should expect a higher wage earner benefit to go away? Not at all. But what it does mean is that we might see a haircut or we might see an additional, it's called a bend point in the formula that would reward the highest wage earners less for their much higher taxes that they pay on social security benefits. We might see changes to the taxation of current benefits. Right now, uh, the most you can be taxed on a social security benefit is that 85 cents of a social security dollar gets taxed as ordinary income at your ordinary income tax rates. Now that could change, 100% of benefits could be taxable for some people. There are a variety of those changes. Uh, full retirement age is probably another one that likely will move and it historically has moved. Going back to 1983, full retirement age was 65. And then over the next 40 years, it moved up to age 67. So those people born 1960 and later, full retirement age, is actually two years later than their grandparents' full retirement age. So some combination of those changes is likely to happen, which is why we likely won't see that full headline benefit cut. But even so, it makes sense to plan for it, be prepared for it, help your client understand that it doesn't mean that Social Security benefits will go away, Instead, it means we'll likely see some combination of reform. We may see some benefit cut, but even with a full benefit cut, it probably doesn't have the disastrous impact on their plan that a headline might lead them to believe. So this is a great opportunity to go out, educate your clients, and we're happy to help you with both communication materials as well as software to help you analyze the impact of a potential benefit cut both on the claiming decision and then also in the overall financial plan. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you for the next Fin Plan Friday.